social media, as we know, is an extremely, extremely powerful tool. But it's the content out there that people are searching for that you can either get lost in the sauce or you can thrive. Now, think about it like this. You know, when I started out in business, there were a couple of different ways to get your information out there. Flyers and knocking on doors and four TV stations and maybe radio and billboards, right? But now there's thousands of platforms on social media and it's overwhelming. It's a sea, right? And a lot of people are trying to have, oh, a million, two million, 10 million followers when that's not what you need. You need quality content for the base that you have, right? And you need to over deliver on that content. And a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. But I'm not going to allow you to make those mistakes. I'm going to give you keys on how to grow your social media, but also grow the quality of the people you are selling to and the quality of your content. I'm going to give you about eight points right now. First of all, like I said, post quality content. Now, there's certain ways to post quality content, posting things that are informative, posting things that are shot the right way, posting things that ask a question maybe at the end or give certain type of calls to action. You got, you got to be able to really have quality content. You've seen it before when people are flooding you know, your social media uh, channels and you're like, oh my God, this person's always talking crap. And the, you know, whatever they're trying to sell or promote, it gets lost in the sauce. So they're shooting in different ways. And you know what? You actually unfollow them most of the time because you, you're like, man, I'm following 10 new ones a week. I need to start cutting 10 away because you know what? It's consuming too much of my time. Number two is test what content works for your audience and doesn't work for your audience. Um, I'll give you an example. You can take 10 different ads out for $10 a piece. That's $100, right? And you're trying to sell a red dress, but you really want to know what content works for your audience. So what do you do? You put in this one, red is a new black. You put in this one, Christmas is here. Red is, isn't the time for red. You put in this one, add romance back to your life with this red dress. You add this one, this red dress will make you look 10 pounds lighter. You add this one, this red dress uh, is from Paris, inspired by Paris's uh, fashion week this week, and it's gonna be the craze next year. Make sure you have it first. And then you look at all those, those 10 ads, and you see that one person like this, seven people like this, zero per, 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 people like this, and 1,900 or 1,000 like this one, and then what you do, you take that one that everybody or the, the majority of them like, and then you repurpose it and make and bigger and better and you then understood what content works for your audience all right now the next one is develop a clear and consistent message across your platforms don't talk like this on LinkedIn and say you hate this and then you love the same thing on Twitter be consistent know who you are um, and make sure that you're very clear about it two to five words I like to say two to five words you know uh, describe yourself or your company or your communication in two to five words okay you want to make it 10 make it 10 but you know I like to say that it's like uh, how Apple has think different Nike has just do it now Nike's just do it can be anything from you wearing a Nike and you going I'm gonna go out there and just do it. I'm going to go out there and do you know 200 push-ups a day. I'm going to run five miles. Also, just do it means uh, for Nike, listen, if you need to take a knee, just do it, right? If you're Colin Kaepernick, just do it. Take the knee. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's clear and consistent, but it moves in various different areas. Don't feel like it's going to lock you down. Forest bias that I had, right? A lot of people thought it was for a color. No, it was about a culture. A lot of people thought it was for just kids in New York. No, it was for people all around the world. But no matter where you were, you were like, for us, by us. This is for us, by us. Whether it was hip hop, whether it was, uh, you know, in Japan, whether it was the skateboarders in um, Korea who loved hip hop, it was for us, by us. All right, number four is communicate and engage with your audience. This is not one way. You just don't keep talking, 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 and you don't engage. Communicate and engage with your audience, even if they critique you, even if it's a customer complaint. A customer doesn't have to complain. They may tell you nothing. How are you going to fix it if they don't tell you, if they don't complain? Customer complaint. I started getting, uh, you know, uh, complaints when FUBU first came out and we were on a large level, excuse me, when we had made it big, that the kids who weren't uh, of color uh, felt like they couldn't wear it because they felt like when they went to school that the kids of color said it's not for you, for us biased as black people. Well, I was dressing Beastie Boys. I was dressing MC Search. I was dressing NSYNC. I was dressing Eminem. 
What are you talking about? So what did I have to do? I had to start promote that I was addressing these people that happened not to be uh, African American, the Barrio Boys. And those kids started to take some of those ads and show them and say, guys, this is about hip hop. Now, that was initially a complaint that kids said I felt a certain way. And I wouldn't have had enough knowledge to then go out and say, wait a minute, maybe I'm too close to it. I'm not doing what I should do and showing that hip hop is a beautiful, beautiful culture. Uh, it's a culture of the streets and it is inclusive. So that is by communicating and engaging with my audience. Now, I was doing that on the streets. Now it's another platform, it's social media, and it's even easier to do that. Communicate and engage your audience. And let me tell you something, you communicate and engage your audience, they're gonna say, wait a minute, did that person or that company hit me back? Okay, all right, I'm their guy, I'm their girl. Let's go to the next one. Establish a relationship with other brands and influencers, collaboration. Did you ever see that Nike and Apple uh, often used to work together? Collaborate. That's what it is, using their audience. You're borrowing their audience and you're loaning your audience to them. When you, when you go into a store, right, think about it like this. It's always best if the shoes are right next to the, the clothes, right, because you want to collaborate. And that's what I used to do. I used to make sure that, uh, you know, a lot of the clothing that I made had the actual colors of the new sneakers coming out from the new sneaker companies because I wanted people to say, okay, if burnt orange Nikes or Pumas are out, I want to go and get a burnt orange FUBU shirt, right? So you want to collaborate and you want to find other ways to do that with people on social media. People love to know that you're all part of a movement. It's like a tribe. It's like a gang. And I'm not saying a gang in a negative way. I don't, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a gang of do-gooders. Right? You want to find ways to uh, collaborate and establish relationships with other people, brands, or influencers. All right, number six is provide free value for your audience. Do you think that's weird, providing free value for your audience? It's not. The person who says it the best, I always like to say, is Gary Vee. He always says, jab, 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 right hook. That was his book. If you haven't uh, read it, please make sure you read it. It's great. Um, he basically says, you need to give, give, give. And then um, one time when you're selling, the people are going to buy. You don't want people to get sell uh, buyer's fatigue every time you know they go onto your site or every time your social media is like, discount, 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 buy this, buy this. Buy. So they're going to go, leave me alone. Do you ever want to walk into a room where somebody's always just selling, always, and just trying to say, here, buy this. You don't want this, buy this. You don't want this, buy this. What about telling me and giving me information going, listen, I'm not sure if you're going to buy from me or not. That's up to you. But this is where nutrition is going, or this is where, uh, you know, this is the new kombucha, or this is that, or this, you know, and, and make that person go someplace else and say, wow, you know what, this person or this place always gives me great information. Isn't that why you follow certain people that are always showing you great information? You know, sometimes you, again, can get too close to it, but you gotta always give really free value to your audience because then when they're thinking about buying, and maybe they're not gonna buy, maybe they're gonna tell somebody else, listen, I don't know, I follow this person on, or, or this company, they really look like they got some great orthopedic shoes for you. You should buy that. That's what you gotta do. You are making them ambassadors. You're giving them information so they can be the smartest person at the water cooler on Monday morning and share that information and then sooner or later tell somebody where they got the information from. All right, here's another one. You want to keep up with the trends but always be on brand. If there's a certain dance out there, if it's uh, the Black Beatles thing or whatever is going out or a certain kind of questionnaires and this and that, it needs to be on your brand. If it's not on your brand, do not do it because then your customers are going to feel like, basically like you're a sellout. Right. You know, when uh, food was big, there was a big, big trend of these jeans called Jenko jeans. And they made, I think it was like 26 or 30 inch bottoms for skateboarders. And we had, you know, dressed skateboarders as well, but it wasn't the same type of skateboarders. And the stores always wanted us to do these jeans like that. And we said, absolutely not. Now, that was a trend. 
but you cannot just follow everything if it's not true to you. If we would have done that and we would have made those bell bottoms, bell bottoms weren't necessarily in. Um, in our community and the people going to the store would have saw these huge bottoms and they wouldn't have related necessarily to the skateboarders. They would have said, is Fubu really trying to go back to the 70s with bell bottoms? And it would have been interpreted a totally different way. All right. And last but not least, don't get caught up on the numbers or followers or likes. Do not do that because what you're going to start doing is feeling that anxiety. I didn't get enough. I didn't get enough. People watching you. Don't worry about it. People are watching you. They don't have to always like. You don't always have to get these massive numbers when you're talking about social media. Sometimes people are afraid to like it. Sometimes people are hating on you. Sometimes people are learning from you and they're just not telling you they're learning from you because again, you made them the smartest person at the water cooler. So now all of a sudden they're at the water cooler talking about you or talking about something they learned from you, but they just don't want to give you credit at that moment. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that the stuff that you put out is quality. You feel good about it. You don't got to second guess yourself. You don't want to take it down because you only got three likes because now all of a sudden somebody's going to say, look, what's wrong with this person? This person's not secure with themselves. Or was this person saying something wrong? Don't worry about it. Put it out there if it's well thought through, if it's on brand, it's communicating with your customer. Sometimes it may not be something that the rest of the world wants to hear, but it's something that you feel passionate about. And didn't you get into business so that you don't have to listen to other people? Trust me, somebody else will like whatever you are putting out there and saying. All right, so now if you need guidance on how to build your presence on social media, I have some resources available to help you turn your social media into a powerhouse for your business. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below. So you know, I always say you should never stop trying to learn new things. So I hope you learned something new from that video. Now, if you're ready to level up and hear from business experts every week, give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you soon.